Hello everyone, sharing this recent case of a primary lumbar hernia. In the CT scan, you can see the psoas in pink, in purple, the quadratus lumborum, the erector spina, and the three lateral muscles uh, complex. The hernia is above the iliac crest and it's in the inferior lateral lumbar triangle corresponding to a primary petit lumbar hernia. This is the way the patient is positioned in the OR. We are accessing the abdomen with uh, the trockers and then the robot is docked. And we make an incision in the peritoneum from the subcostal fat all the way down to the suprailiac fat. We uh, take into consideration that we want to provide sufficient medial overlap. Therefore, the incision is made at least 10 centimeters away from the closest edge of the hernia defect. For these kinds of hernias, we want to stay as close as possible to the muscles because uh, if we dissect around or uh, through the fat, it is likely that we can injure nerves that will be coming from the lumbar plexus. As the dissection progresses, the hernia defect becomes more evident and we perform the volcano sign, thus ensuring uh, that the hernia contents are going inside of the hernia defect, now uh, starting to dissect them away. We want all the fat to be dissected uh, out as possible, preserving uh, the integrity of the muscles surrounding the fat. And once we're able to achieve a full reduction of the hernia contents, we focus on the dissection of the muscles in the lumbar area. As the dissection progresses down, we realize in the background there is the iliac muscle and coming from the groove between the suprailiac fat and the retroperitoneal fat, what is likely to be the lateral femorocutaneous nerve. As the dissection progresses cephala, we can uh, see how the kidney is being retracted and we locate the 12th rib and we dissect down from the rib knowing that the quadratus lumborum muscle is going to be inserting in the 12th rib in the lateral arcuate ligament and it's going to go down into the iliac crest. After locating the muscle, we are going to do the dissection uh, bringing the fat away from the muscle, uh, always uh, making sure that you're not entrapping a nerve. And then we see the quadratus lumborum going behind the iliac crest and the muscle fibers of the iliacus muscle in the center. Next in the order of priorities, after having located the iliacus muscle and the iliac crest is the dissection of the psoas muscle. The psoas muscle is going to be more inferior and medial to us. And on top of this muscle, it is very common to localize the genitofemoral nerve. Because we're doing a more proximal dissection, the genitofemoral nerve is usually not branched and we're only going to find a common trunk. And here you can see the relationship between the quadratus lumborum, the iliac crest, and the psoas muscle. You can see here the 12th rib, the lateral arcuate ligament, and the quadratus lumborum inserting in it. And as we uh, uh, observe in the lumbar area, we can start seeing the delineation of some structures that may uh, start to give us confirmation of the nerves that we've just dissected. In the image, you can appreciate the common trunk of the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerve, the lateral femorocutaneous nerve, and the common branch of the genitofemoral nerve. After the dissection is complete, we close the hernia defect, reapproximating the transversus abdominus and the internal oblique muscle to the fascia, the thoracolumbar fascia, which has been uh, uh, disrupted. For this process, we're using a number one V-lock, 45 centimeters, and 
careful uh, care is taken not to entrap the common branch of the iliopogastric and ilioinguinal nerve that seems to be running uh, just one inch below the hernia defect. You can see through the microfascia protecting the transversus muscle how the uh, nerve can uh, move when you press on it. The hernia defect is closed by reapproximation of gradually tightening of the uh, suture so that we don't uh, have any rents or, or the injure the, the muscle itself. This is a thorough and meticulous process, but in the end, restoration of the integrity of the lateral abdominal wall is achieved. Because of the proximity of the ilioinguinal ilioepogastric uh, common trunk to the hernia defect, I feel unsure after closing the hernia defect because I do want to make sure that this patient hasn't uh, the nerves entrapped in the suture line. Therefore, with careful, we're opening the microfascia and taking a look to see the way the both nerves run underneath the hernia defect. Most of the dissection is performed with cold cut scissors and there you can see the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerve nicely preserved and safe without having been entrapped uh, along the suture line. The dissection is followed until we surpass the hernia defect, thus ensuring that the nerves are safe. We Take this opportunity to infiltrate with ropivacaine the nerves uh, because we see them directly. We never inject directly on the nerve. We inject in the surrounding tissues. And this is just to provide an outcome, uh, a painless outcome uh, of the surgery for the patient. There's the infiltration of the lateral femorocutaneous nerve and in the end, infiltration of the genitofemoral nerve. Needle is extracted in a middleweight macroporous polypropylene mesh, 15 by 25 centimeters is introduced and it's uh, deployed covering all the space that the dissection uh, had been uh, designed for. We take a few bites with to ovicryl just to keep the mesh uh, adequately deployed without wrinkles or folds so it integrates perfectly and when we fixate the mesh we are just performing uh, air knots we are not tightening so that it will cause ischemia or uh, injure the 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 muscles where the the mesh is being integrated lastly with the same suture that we fixated the that we close the hernia defect the hernia is fixated in the center, the mesh is fixated in the center, I'm sorry. And we ensure that there is enough overlap in the posterior layer, making sure the mesh is nicely tucked behind the gerota's fascia and the kidney. One last stitch is placed on top of the iliopsoas muscle. This is a very loose stitch, it's just to make sure that the peritoneum is going to run on top of the mesh and that the mesh is not going to wrinkle or clamshell. And in the end, the peritoneum is closed with a running uh, 20180 V-lock. Once the integrity of the peritoneum is restored, the needles are extracted and suction is applied to make sure that the bowel uh, runs uh, nice and easy on top of the mesh and the CO2 is extracted. Patient had an uneventful postoperative outcome. She went home the day following the surgery and went back to her original city just uh, seven days after the procedure. Thank you very much.